Hey, welcome back to the channel. So today we have a good looking puzzle here. Uh, this one is called Disjoint Kropke. It's from Chris Napolitano. I believe I've said that correctly. I have not seen any puzzles by this creator before, so I thought it'd be a nice one to jump into, get a little bit of a fresh face, at least in terms of what I've um, solved. For this He may have be making these for years and I just haven't seen them before, but Anyway, um, as you can see, it's going to be a crop key style um, puzzle. And we actually have some given digits. Again, a little bit unusual for this. So uh, let's just get into these rules and see what's going on. So we've got normal Sudoku rules apply. So like always, every row, every column, and every 3x3 three three box contains the digits 1 through 9 once each. Now, we've got disjoint groups, with cell, which says cells with the same position within the boxes contain all the numbers one to nine. So what does that mean? Well, I think if he's given an example, essentially. Um, well, that's not entirely true. What we have is, I think what this is saying is that this top left corner um, of every one of the regions must contain the digits one through nine once each. Same will be for the middle one and so on and so forth. Now we've got cells joined by a white dot, must have a difference of one. So either difference of one or consecutive is usually how it's described. So whatever this digit is, this one has to be one higher or one lower or consecutive. And cells joined by a black dot must be in a one to two ratio. So, and then not all dots are given. Uh, which removes our negative constraint possibility. So uh, on a black dot like this one here, what we could say is whatever this digit is, x, and uh, this is either half x or 2x. So it just has to be in a 1 to 2 ratio. One is half of the other one. One is double the other one. Those are all, are all of our rules. So uh, let's just get into this one and see what, uh, what comes of it. And where would be a good place to start? Well, um, do we want to look at our disjoint groups first, or do we want to get into our crop key dots? That's probably something we need to think of. No product placement there. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, well, there's a couple of things that we might be able to use in terms of our black crop key dots. And I don't think the disjoint groups right at the moment are going to help us too much. Uh, I'm sure there's, we can remove uh, possible options for some of them, but I think we have to kind of get into this a little bit further before that becomes a real uh, force in this Sudoku solve. Um, so first thing I'm noticing is there's a couple of areas where we have black crop key dots, which are being limited by the digits that see them. So like down here, uh, we can't ever have a 3-6 on this black crop key dot because we have 3 and 6 both staring at it. Um, and I guess I, could, I can go over real quickly again all the possible variations of on a black crop key dot because they have to be in a 1 to 2 ratio. Therefore, they can only be 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, and 4, 8. Those are the only possibilities. You can't ever have a 5, 7, or a 9 on a black crop key because you can't have or double any of those three um, digits and have a valid um, Sudoku digit, <clears throat> which would just mean that this has to be from one, two, four, and eight. Not super useful at this point, but down in here, we, we actually have a bit of a better understanding, I think, of what is available. Because we cannot have a two, we can never have the one, two pair. So, and we can't have the two, four pair. So the only two types of pairs we have left are going to be 4, 8, and 3, 6. So these are going to have to be 4, 8, and 3, 6. Now this can't be 3, so this can't be 6, and this can't be 8, so this can't be 4. And we'll look here. We also have, um, by putting in those digits, we also now can take a look at our um, possibility of digits that are um, consecutive or are different by 1. <clears throat> because these two black crop key dots essentially touch each other and therefore have some connection. Uh, and if you look at these digits, well, you can't ever put a six in here because you, can, you can't connect to it. You can't put an eight here because you can't connect to it. So 
we can remove our a six and eight, you get a three, four pair, which means we can remove three and four from here. Now, we can't quite say which order they go in. This one of them is going to be three, six, one of them is going to be four, eight. The three and the four are the ones that touch here, and these two will just come along for the ride. Um, but knowing what these digits are, we start to limit what can actually go in the remainder of the boxes, but not by a huge amount. We know there has to be a one down here because the one sees into it. <clears throat> now, the other thing I was going to look at um, was this, where the positioning of these digits is in relation to all the other uh, regions because we have that disjoint group that said that cells uh, with the same position within each box contain all the numbers one through nine. So this, uh, this cell up here, we don't have anything, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we don't have anything um, reducing um, what this can be because we have to have the digits one through nine once each, and we only have a one focused on it. But if we look over here, we're going to see that these are in the same position. Now, we can never repeat any of uh, the digits in those positions because we only have nine possible locations, so therefore you must use each digit once in each of those nine uh, locations to get uh, all of our digits in responsibly. So therefore, this is now going to have to be an eight because it cannot repeat as a six, and we can do our four, three, six. Now, that being seen, um, are we going to go into our threes? Maybe, because we, we're looking down in here, we know there has to be a three somewhere in here. The problem with that is we don't necessarily know where it goes. It could be on our black crop key dot. It could be off of our black crop key dot. And we can't, I don't think we can make a determination there as to which one is correct. Now, what we can also start looking at is we've got white crop key dots that are attached to given digits. <clears throat> so therefore, we're going to know this has to either be six or eight. Let's put those in. We don't have anything looking at that one just yet either. Uh, here, we either go um, down to a three or up to a five. Again, we don't have anything in that first spot checking this. But if we were to continue this, this would then go down to a two or up to a six. We can't put a 2 here because we already have a 2 here. So therefore, this must be 6 and this must be 5. Now, if this is 6 and 5, can we say what these are? And I don't think we can quite yet. Because again, we know we've just removed the 3, 6 possibility from this black crop. You know, in fact, we did it up here because they're both of them are seeing this one. Um, but we're still left with our 1, 2, 4, and 8 possibilities. And it's probably not quite much we can do with that at the moment. So... Where else can we look? We end up having fives looking into here. That actually, that actually works well. As, I, as we stated previously, you cannot ever have a five on a black crop key dot because you can't have or double it and have a valid Sudoku. So now that we know there's a five there, we know there's a, these two fives are looking into this region. And we can't have a five on a black crop key, so this must be a five. And... I don't know that that's going to get us much more out of this. Just scanning around real quick to see if it is, if our fives are doing anything further. I don't see them doing so. Now, the other thing we had was sixes looking into the middle. So we have one of these has to be a six. This being a six would put a three here, but at the moment there's nothing rem 
removing that as a possibility because we don't really have much in these bottom left corners other than that seven. So, well, this can't be a three, I guess we can say, because if that's a three, we'd have to put a six here. So let's get rid of that one. So we know the three is on our white crotchy dot somewhere. So these have to be from, well, they either have to be a two, three, or four. This clearly can't be a four here. <clears throat> and we don't have, again, we don't have anything yet in that bottom corner uh, to say which of these may be possible to re be removed. And the other thing we can do with our, f um, <clears throat> excuse me, something in my throat, is to look at the, in terms of you know where a five can go, we can we can say we can never put a five up there, we can because we can't ever put fives in any of these locations in any box, whether the five sees them literally sees them via Sudoku or not. So we can make a couple of little things. We can say that can't be in. I don't think it affected anything down here though. <clears throat> um, that one can't be in. This two can't be in. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to have continued on. Well, this one can't be in, and this one can't be in because we've got two fives looking here. So it actually did do a little bit. We know one of these two has to be, and one of these two has to be, so these two can't be. So we end up with a couple more fives. And though, now if this was a five, we could rule out the six here because we have a six here, but this could still be a five and this could be a four. And actually it cannot be a four. So I think we can, I think we can remove this, this as being a possible five. And why is that? Well, let's take a look at it a little further. Because like I said, if this was a five, we have a white crop, th two white crop key dots there um, in succession here. If this is a five, this either has to be a four or a six. Because those are the two digits that are consecutive with five. We have a six here, so therefore this can't ever be a six. So if this was a five, this would have to be a four. And this digit here would have to be a three. Because we can't go back up to five because the five is already um, down here somewhere. So it would have to be five, four, three, and we've got a three up here looking at it. So therefore this five can never be there. It must be here. And we can continue to look at some of these things and say there has to be a five up here. So a little bit of work there to get some fives, but at the end of the day, it wasn't uh, massively helpful. What about this? digit, because it's one of the few things we still have some information on. If this is a 2, this has to be a 4, which is possible. If this is a 3, this has to be a 6, which is possible. And if this is a 4, this must, well, it could be a 2 or an 8, and both are possible. So that's, that didn't get me very far. Okay. Now, I am tempted again to look at the fives again because we, we had ruled out some other, uh, this other spot, but I think it, it takes care of itself in just basic Sudoku, and we don't have to use the disjointed groups to, uh, uh, to further delve into that one. So we need to find a good place to make our next move. And the black crop dots seem like they're going to be the best place to look again. So there's got to be one of these in here that are going to have limitations to them. Now, we know, well, this one is probably the best one. We know this can't be, well, it can't have an eight, so it can't be four, eight. It can't also um, be three, six, because we've got a three, six looking here. So if I put a three or a six here, I have nothing to put here. So we've ruled out three, six, and eight. So we're down to one, two, and four. Now this can't have a two or a four because we've got two and four looking at it. So this has to be one. This has to be two. Now, if this is one, we can get rid of our one mark here. 
Now, if this is two, we have to now use our white drop D dot because this digit has to be adjacent and it can't go down to one because we have a one looking at it. So this ends up being a three and this could still be a two or a four. We cannot make that distinction just yet because we don't have a two or a four in any of these other boxes in this location. This could go two, three, four, or it could do two, three and back to two again. Now, that has given us a two, a one, and a three to start looking at. But, I mean, we already knew there was a three down here. We know, we knew that none of these could have threes in them. And we know none of these are threes. Mm. Well, the only thing we haven't looked at, I guess, is this middle one. This can't be a three because of our disjoints. And this one can't be as well because of this one. Was there anything else here? Doesn't appear to be. No, it's okay. That three didn't help us too much, it didn't seem. What about the two or the one? We don't really have much on the one side. We do know, though, that one of these has to be a one. Therefore, none of these are ones. And this one can't be a one because of our disjoint. So one of these is a one. If this was a one, it would force both of these to be twos. So therefore, this can't be one. So this is one. And it's not quite getting us our disjoints again. So what else can we do with the ones, if anything? We know one of these two has to be a one by Sudoku. And none of these are taken by ones just yet. Um, the twos, I don't think there was much more I can do with that one. This digit is almost a good one to look at because we know it can't be one, two, or eight. So it's either a four or it's three or six. And again, there's nothing ruling out three or six from either of these. And if this was a four, this has to either be a two or an eight and none of them are being looked at from here. So that, yeah, that didn't do what I hoped it would do. All right. Starting to think that the determination of this six might end up impacting something else up here somewhere, but that is just conjecture at the moment. Is there anything else I can do with, let's say, sevens or nines? Because we stated that sevens and the nines were one of those other items that couldn't be on a black crop, you just like the five. So we know we can't have sevens in any of these. And I don't know if we want to run the gamut of where those sevens can be. It doesn't look like it's going to bear much fruit. I mean, we know one of these is a seven, so that can't be a seven. So one of these two is a seven. The only, we only have that one seven, so all it does is rule out a couple of these as being sevens and this one. But that's not, again, that's not enough. So we open in our sevens here. We found a little something to um, to mark, but it doesn't uh, doesn't get us too much unless we can say something about this seven being on a white crop key dot. Because if this is a seven, this would have to go up to eight. Because I can't go down to six. And if it went up to eight, it would have to come back down to four. But we don't have anything in these locations that is removing that from being a four. Now, could we have done something similar with a five that I didn't look at there? If this is a five, this must be a four. Nothing ruling that out that I can see. And if that's a four, this then would have to be a two or an eight. And again, there's nothing ruling that out either. Okay. I think what that means is this is not giving me anything. 
Um, I'm going to take one more look at this 7 before moving on to the possibility of this 9 being of any use. Mm, I don't see much, and I don't really see much of the, of the 9 being useful either. Because while I can remove these types of things, it's not... There's not enough quite here. Yeah. Okay, so nines don't appear to be that useful either. So I've got to find another black crop key dot that's going to do me some good, I think. And the question is, where is it? What about this digit? We know it can't be 1, we know it can't be 5, 7, or 9, and we know it can't be 8. Can this be 3 or 6? It absolutely can. And it can also be 2 or 4. So we're not getting much there either. Okay, so there's something here I'm just not quite seeing yet. How do we figure that out? Don't know. The other thing is we've got a couple of eights that are looking into here. But any of these could be eights. Well, I guess this can't be an eight because this will force this to be a four. So it's a tiny little thing. Eight can go there. And we can't do much with the eights elsewhere. Let's say, would it be possible to reduce the options of eights in this area because so if this is an eight this is a four but that doesn't that doesn't restrict me either okay all right so it seems i am a little bit stuck on where to next look almost looking at crossroads of where we have few numbers that I can get a reduction in, let's say, this type of digit. That was the one I was looking at. You get a little bullseye here. So we know this can't be 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, or 8. There wasn't quite anything else looking in there. But let's see. Let's just give this one a go, and then I'm going to look at disjointed groups one more time around the board just to see if there's something there that I'm not seeing. So we the possibilities here are what? 3, 7, and 9? Is that accurate? Because it can't be 1, can't be 2, can be 3, can't be 4, can't be 5, can't be 6, could be 7, can't be 8, could be 9. So yeah, those are the options here. 3, 7, or 9. This can't be 9 because we have our 8 marker here, so we can get rid of our 9 possibility. So now we're down to 3 and 7. Now if this is a 7, it cannot go up to 8, because we have the same issue, the reason why we remove this as an option. So if this was 7, it would have to go down to 6, and it cannot do that because we've got two 6s looking at it. So this can only be a 3. So that's good. Now if this is a 3, this either has to be a 2 or a 4, and it can't be a 2. So this is a 4. Okay, here we go. Now, this has to be either a 2 or an 8. And sadly, there's nothing seeing that. Hmm. Which is interesting. Now, what I was going to start looking at, and I kind of mentioned it going back to the disjointed um, group, cells is maybe find a cell where I have quite a bit of information as to what can go where and maybe I can start ruling out what digits are possible and that could give me enough information to finalize. Now I just picked this one kind of randomly because it has at the moment, it's got a decent amount of items in the in those cells. The other one that might be fine is this top middle one. Let's look at this one real quick. So 
So we know we have to put a 1 and a 2 in these locations. The 1 cannot go in any of these, cannot go in any of these, and it cannot go there. So it must go in one of these two. Sadly, we again run into the situation where that doesn't give me quite enough information. Now, the two has more options on it, so it's not as good. So let's go here, maybe, because we again, we do have a few of these digits that are given, because we've already got the one, two, three, five, and six. Now we have to put in a four somewhere. And the only thing eliminated is this one right here. Five and six are good. So the seven would have to go somewhere. It could go almost anywhere of these free. In fact, it can go any of these ones that are free. The eight has to go somewhere. It could go in almost any of them except for this. And then our nine, which once again can go anywhere. So that's not giving me anything, which is a shame. What about, do we have anything on the middles here? Not a whole lot, to be honest. One is already taken. The two can be in too many places. The three can only be in two places, here and here. But again, that's enough um, to not give me any um, definitive answers. Fours and fives are already taken. How about sixes? None of these can be six. None of the, this one can't be six, and clearly these two can't be six. So one of these two is six. Just enough there. So I might be like one step ahead before going into these boxes like this is going to help. Either that or I just haven't picked the right box to look at yet. Again, we need to have a one in s one of these. But there are three possibilities. Two, three, and four are taken. Fives. Five can't go in any of these. It can't go in any of these, and it can't be this one. So the five has to be in one of these two. The exact same thing we had in the other one. Just not quite enough. Sixes, there are multiple options. Sevens are multiple options. Eights have multiple options. And so do the nines. Okay. So this is not working. So let's try to find something else, I guess. Hmm. Well, let's look at anything we have where we have a digit that's a given. Or not necessarily a given, but a either a given or we have a, only a couple of options of where a digit can go in that region. So like here. Now we had already looked at these and we couldn't quite figure anything out. What about this? Can this really be a five? So this would have to be four or six. It could be either. If this was a five. If this was a four, this would have to be a two, which is fine. If it was a six, this would have to be a three, which is fine. So not getting anything out of that. Oh. Now, there just isn't anything quite clear to me as to where the next step is. Having to kind of uh, jockey around and find little bits and pieces here and there. Hmm. Now, there really wasn't any, at least not that I saw, of places like, when we originally looked at this, where we have clues that are on a crop key 
style of 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 rule clue rule and also has reductions in what it could actually be so it's hoping to get something out of that so we already said one of these had to be a one the two we said there was multiple places it could go the three is already there and that's the only one we really have the four has multiple options the five mm. again two options for the five and then six is Oh, there it is. Finally got something. Sixes. Where can a six go in any of these? It can't go here. 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 And can't go here. So it must go here. Okay. There's something we needed. Therefore, this must be a three. And we can put a six here. Oop. Nope. That's not what I meant to do. And is that going to give us what we need to get this thing finished? It's going to help. Because we can remove six from all of these because we put a three in here now. So this, there, there can't be a six on this black crop key. So one of these must be a six. We know these are from five, seven, and six. So let's put these in properly. And I'll get rid of our, oops, didn't mean to do that much. Get rid of those clues. And now that we know that, we can say this has to be an eight. Because um, five, six, and seven, look at that. And these two have to be from what, four? and nine and of course there isn't anything looking at that at the moment okay what about these three digits because they're all on crop key dots they're going to have to have some sort of use right so we have to have two four and eight which means there has to be a four down here because it's either two four or four eight and we know there's no eight so that's not eight so this is a two four pair so we get our eight here we're going to get our four here and that is getting us something and now this we know this has to be a seven because it has to be consecutive therefore this is six and this is five and okay none of our markings are kind of lining up with that but we're going to get into some sudoku here i think in a second that we can hopefully uh, determine what some of the stuff is now if this is a two or a four this what can it be it could be a three if this is a two and it could be a three or a five if it's the four so that's the only options down here are three and five okay now where else do we have a bunch of information we can work with what about these three digits? They have to be from one, two, and five. And nothing is seeing those. Okay. Let's look at, let's go back and look at our Sudoku here for a second, because we've, we've had some um, things pop up here that might be of help to get us maybe one or two more digits that'll then really get us to, to set things off. Uh, and let's just see if we can figure these out. Uh, yeah, we have a three. It has to go here. One of these has to be a three. So I think we have an X-wing on threes. We do. So we've got these two are X-wings, and we can use that X-wing over here as well. Because we know that if this is a three, then this is a three, or if this is a three, and this is a three. So both of these have taken up their three wherever it is. So we can never have another three in either of these positions anywhere else in the grid. So therefore, none of those are threes, and none of these are threes. So therefore, this has to be a three. And that'll, yeah, we'll still have that X wing of three sitting there, but that's perfectly fine. Um, let's keep going with that because that. That did give us some good information. The fours now. We have to put a four here. And did it do anything else for us? For us? I know, terrible. Uh, no, I don't see it. Uh, fours up in here. Can't go there. Yeah. All that 
useful, okay. Uh, let's look at our fives. We know one of these two has to be a five. We know one of those two had to be a five. And there wasn't anything else down in here we could have used, so fives don't look all that uh, useful to us. Sixes, there we go. There's another digit we have. Sixes go here, which puts our one here. Now, does that do anything further with our one? No, it doesn't look like it just yet. So our sixes look like they're pretty much done. Let's fill them out. I think that was all of them. Yes, it was. Good. So there we go. We've got some movement now. Sevens don't help. And eights don't really look like they help. We know none of these are eights. That's not an eight. So one of these two is an eight. None of these are eights by Sudoku. So therefore, this is eights. The eights do help mightily. And that's going to give us a bunch of information. This now has to be two. This has to be four. And we should be able to kind of scoot now. This four sees this one, so this has to be two and four. Now we should probably get into the remainder of these twos, which we can. Uh, this is a given digit. This is three, and this has to be, uh, where is it, the nine? This digit has to be given, and it's a five. These are from seven and nine. We don't quite know which one's which yet. Correct? Yeah, we don't have any information up on those for that just yet. Now, do I just kind of keep going with Sudoku here? Now that things have started to fill in, we should have better information. Threes were done. Fours are done. Yes. So this is four and eight. Fours were done. Fives were not done. I don't see anything off there. I might be missing something, but sevens, there's practically nothing in our sevens yet. So uh, how about our eights? We do have an eight here looking here, so let's use the clue because that is the point of this solve. This has to be an eight, and therefore this has to be an eight. Uh, let's look at the nine real quick, just while it's in focus here. So we can put a five nine up here, and then we can put a two right here, and this will end up being a seven. Now, this has to be for 5 or 9, but it doesn't help us. These two digits. Well, let's look at the 5, 9 again. Is there anything across? No, there isn't, surprisingly. What about these two? Well, actually, we can use that 7. Okay, sorry, I'm getting a phone call, but it's just scam. We can use the 7 to differentiate. This is 9 and 7. Uh, what was I saying over here before I got distracted? We have to have a 1... And a 7. We do have a 7 here, so this must be 1 and this must be 7. These two digits now, um, we don't really need the crop key dot, but we know that they're 1 and 2. Do we have anything that's showing us what either one of those could be? I'll just put it in there. I don't think so. No, I don't see anything there. I think that was the last clue. So we're going to be down to um, base Sudoku using our disjoint groups here uh, to try to finish this. So we said this had to be 5 or 9. And we didn't have a 5 or a 9. But we do know that 5s and 9s are now taken in both of those um, locations. So let's go back to our disjoints and see what we have left over for some of these. Uh, since that is the rule set. Instead of just going to continue down the Sudoku, let's uh, kind of use that rule set as much as we can. So we need to be able to put a 1. So one of these is a 1, and the other digit must be a 7. And we have a 7 looking, so yes, we can use that. This is 1, this is 7. That's therefore going to give us a 9. That 1 gives us our 2 and our 1. This has to be a 7. The 
these two digits have to be from 2 and 9. We've got a 2, so this is 9. This is 2. And uh, we should have a couple of given digits now. This has to be a 1. This is 5 or 9. And we have the 9 down here that's looking at it. So this is 5. This is 9. 5, 9. This is a given 7. These two digits have to be from 2 and 9. And we've, we've got a 9 looking in there, both in the, um, the column and in the disjoint type of group, even though they're you know combined. So this is 2 and 9. And then we can get rid of that mark there, because that's this has to be the 1. Therefore, this has to be the 5. And our last digit, as a lark, let's look at it from disjoint. Uh, and we are therefore given a 7. There we go. And that is the, uh, so, uh, the solution to the puzzle. So that was a fun one. Um, didn't take too long. It got kind of caught in the middle there trying to figure out where exactly the next clue was to get to it. But what's found, it's it all worked quite well together. So uh, Chris, thank you for creating this puzzle. Uh, I enjoyed it. I certainly hope you all did. And uh, I'll check in the next one. Thanks. Bye.